Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing my October favourites, like what October, it literally feels like two days ago I sat down and filmed my September favourites. So don't even know what's going on there, but I have a whole bunch of favourites to show you guys. I seriously have so many things on my table laid out that I want to talk to you guys that I don't even know where to start. So, I guess I'll start off with this one skincare item. This is the facial moisturizer that I've been using in the daytime every single day, um, regardless of if I'm wearing makeup or not. I only use it in the daytime though. This is the Estee Lauder Day Wear Advanced Multi-Protection Antioxidant Cream with SPF 15. I don't remember how I got this, but I do remember just finding it in my drawer and I was like, ooh, no joke, this stuff smells so fresh. If you are sensitive to fragrance, I wouldn't recommend this for you, but if you're wanting a nice moisturizer that doesn't leave your face greasy, I would recommend this one. I do wish that it had a higher SPF, but I guess that could be a good or a bad thing depending on how you look at it. But overall, I really, really like it. I don't know if I would pay the price of it, um, but I do like it. It is very, very nice. If anyone's like, Laura, what's a foundation you would recommend? I would definitely, without a doubt, in my mind, say EX1 Invisiwear Foundation. This, you can get light coverage, you can get medium coverage, you can get full coverage out of this foundation. I own three shades. You would have seen that in my haul. Um, I'll link that down below if you haven't seen it already. So I have three shades, F200, 300, and 100. What the hell was that? So yeah. I have three shades, F200, F300, and F100. Obviously, 100 is the lightest. Um, I use F200 the most. I seriously love this stuff. It is great. I would highly, highly recommend it. It's only about $17 each, which for me personally, I do not think that is expensive at all. I do think that is quite affordable. So that is why I do recommend this to people. It is a very, very good foundation. It's good quality. And I'll link my first impressions of it down below if you're curious on how it lasts throughout the day. Let's talk about contouring for a quick, quick minute. Um, so I was using the Anastasia of Beverly Hills contour kit for majority of the month until about maybe mid-October, I found or was released rather the An the, Anastasia, the Australis AC on tour contour and highlight kit. Now this is literally the exact same or better than this. Like look, this is bigger and this is better made. Like this is plastic, this is cardboard. Like, and this is better pigmentation. Like what, $17.40 US dollars, so like 47 Australian dollars. Like, what? This is $30 more than this, and this is better. Like, I feel like I wasted my money on this. But, if you own this, I don't think you need this. Um, I just got it because, like, I'm a makeup hoarder. Okay, so, Lorac 2 Pro Palette. This I recently picked up. I picked it up on Amazon for $42 American dollars. And it was only, like, $11 shipping. Whole long story. Watch my other haul. You'll, you'll hear the story. Um, but anyway, I've been using this palette so much. I'm really, really glad that I added it to my collection purely because it's colors that I never thought that I would use or colors that I don't already own. So for example, I don't own a matte charcoal color that is this creamy. I don't own a jade that like this. Like I don't own any matte navy blue. It's just, it's a really, really nice palette to complement any makeup collection. Like if you're a beginner, I probably wouldn't recommend this to you, but if you are more moderate to advanced in makeup and you do have a large uh, collection like you do have one or two other eyeshadow palettes i do think this one would be a good one to add to your collection um, because it does have those colors that aren't typical of those neutral palettes like the urban decay naked palettes how it's all like bronzes and like all that taupiness and rose pretty colors it's not like that it's like it's a it's a different array of wearable color which I personally do enjoy, and I would recommend it. I like it. I'm literally so huffed and so puffed from like talking about all these products. But anyway, soldiering on. I feel like this is gonna be a long video. Um, so I've been reaching a lot for my Chanel Bronzing Universal or Soleil Tan de Chanel. I have been reaching for this so much, and I just like it for everyday use. It's super, super easy. I apply it with a stippling sponge. It looks like that. The color is quite nice. 
that's the color there obviously you wouldn't wear it that opaque on your face but it is a very very nice product and if you're looking to splurge on a product from chanel this is most probably the product that i would recommend purely because it's so unique um yeah purely because it's so unique if you're looking for a product if you're looking for a product from chanel this is the one that i would recommend eyebrows now this isn't what i use like like i have today this is more what i've been doing every day for work I've replaced the Ilamasca Eyebrow Cakes and the Benefit Gimme Brow. Like, what? Seriously, no joke. I have been using the MAC Eyeshadow in the shade Brun. It looks like this. It's just a darker color, which I think complements my eyebrows very, very nicely. And it's just super, super quick in the morning. I'm just like, do 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 And then I just comb through with the Maybelline Brow Drama in Dark Brown. I really, really like this. A thing that I was noticing with my Benefit Gimme Brow was that it was actually making my eyebrows too dark and not in the good way. It was just making them way too dark and way too harsh and it was altering the color of the brow. So that wasn't what I wanted. Um, so this, it's not the same as Benefit Gimme Brow. Don't get mistaken by that. It's not the same at all. This is more just a tint which holds your brows in place. Now it does more than just your standard clear brow gel. Like it does have color to it and you can use this alone and I have used it alone in my brows. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. It's a good product, but it's not the exact same as Benefit Gimme Brow. Bronzer, when I've been wanting a powder bronzer, I have been using the Bobbi Brown bronzer in the shade Golden Light. This is the shade of it here. And if I just swatch it, it is quite a nice soft powder. It is quite similar in color to the Chanel Bronzing Universal. It's just that tiny bit darker. And it's matte. I don't really know what else I need to say about it. It is just a really, really nice bronzed bronzer if you want that bronzed look. It's not too dark, but it's not too light. I can use it when I'm pale and I can use it when I'm tan. So that's what I want in a bronzer. I'm happy with it. Okay, so for lips, I've been wearing red lipstick nonstop. I love two of them. One is from MAC. This is Russian Red. And I have swatched it on my hand. It's that one there. And then I also have been loving the Lime Crime Velveteen in the shade Red Velvet. That's what it looks like in the packaging. And that's what it looks like swatched on my hand. It's absolutely beautiful. I love them both. So yeah. I would recommend either of those if you're looking for a nice red. Um, Ruby... Wait, pff, Ruby. Russian Red is a matte, but it's definitely not like Ruby Woo, how it's super drying. This is more moisturizing. It is what I have on my lips at the moment. So yeah, it's definitely a creamier red than Ruby Woo. Ruby Woo is like so dry. I don't like that one, but I do love Russian Red. So I think I'm losing my voice because I'm talking so much. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below your favorites for the month as well. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye.